Okay, this is my uh, company logo. My so who am I? I'm, I'm Peter Spence, and you can hear me okay. The volume's okay. Yes. Great. So I'm Peter Spence. I'm a visual effects supervisor and animation director, working in the film and uh, movie and TV industry. Uh, I'm British, although I'm based in Norway, um, although working internationally. So I thought I'd start the presentation. I'm going to be talking about an animated series I've created stereoscopically, and but um, to build up to the uh, to where it all began and how I got to that point, here is a bit more about me. So um, this is a showreel of some recent work. Just a minute or two. So that's a, a recent uh, showreel um, showing some of my work in the film and movie industry. And um, I thought I'd tell a little bit about my stereoscopic journey. Um, oh, hang on, steady, here we go. So uh, like many, the, my uh, first foray into stereoscopic imagery was the Viewmaster when I was a kid. Um, seeing all these sort of amazing, and often it would be uh, tied in with movies. They would release a slide set for uh, various, often animated um, productions and also sort of big blockbuster things. So I've got quite a collection at, at home, of course. Um, and then and then a bit of a dip out of stereoscopic world because that was, you know, that was, as I say, with the um, as a as a kid. But then, um, on a school trip, we went to a a place called the Exploratory in uh, in Bristol in England, and they had a whole three D exhibition. Now I was un unable to find the three D picture, but there was this one of the uh, the Clifton Suspension Bridge, which I had in an anaglyph version on my, which I picked up at this museum and uh, had on my wall for years with the, the red and the blue glasses. So you could see that, and it had an amazing depth and it was always, it always fascinated me that I could depth from a, from a picture. 
um, just by wearing the glasses and how it picked out. And then uh, other other ways of seeing 3D imagery, so back through sort of back through the ages, from this uh, the wiggle technology, <laughs> which um, you could get depth just from seeing the two different angles and then wiggling the, the picture backwards and forwards and how the brain can be tricked into seeing depth in essentially just two images playing like that. And other optical illusions, for example, uh, scrap from Ice Age and the way you could, you know, optical illusions and ways of creating a more depth in an image, things like this with these, the way he breaks the, 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 um, the frame there and, and it gives you the feeling that, that he's popping out of the screen more than just a traditional unanimated version. So, um, and then of course, the magic eye books, which was quite a thing, of course, in the, uh, well, 90, early 90, late 80s, early 90s. And um, these, these uh, dotty pictures, and these, these were, I was very fascinated by these because how could you get depth out of just dots? And so I learned much more about, you know, so this when I'm in my late teens and early 20s. So I was learning how to uh, create these images. And I learned about this thing called a Z, Z depth map. So um, the, as you can see, the, the inset version of the 3D image that if you, if you free view it, you then can see the depth. So this whole um, idea of like, okay, you can create depth just from dots. And this then took me um, to, as a child, I had uh, starry stickers on my room, on my bedroom ceiling. And I was quite, um, I thought, okay, I could rearrange that. I spent many evenings rearranging the dots so I could then, sort of I could free view them and uh, see some depth. So I had to sort of create two versions of the starry sky. And then I could lie in bed and <laughs> and look at the ceiling, free view it and get a, a vert. This is not the actual um, view of my ceiling. That's uh, long since gone, but uh, get the idea. This is you know, a concept. And uh, so I could see depth in the stars, similar to uh, Vanessa's work and um, that we you know, fantastic starry galaxies. Okay, so this then brings us on to a, a, a part of my career where I then started working in the visual effects industry, discovering that um, depth and uh, dots could be, um, could be actually quite useful. So in visual effects, we, um, one of my specialities is a thing called match move, in which we take some existing footage and we need to augment it with a digital character. So you take the footage and then you go in and you track various, you look in at what's a stable point and you can go in and track the little mark, you set your little markers. And then from setting markers on points that are not moving, you can then through the software create a depth map. So you can create all these dots and then from that you can extract camera information. So you see there the blue camera and then having then created those markers you can then add augment it with with digital elements whether it's if it's a you know a war movie it's an explosion or a perhaps a dinosaur running past that needs to jump over a, a tree stump those sort those sort of things so this match move process and um and that's why i became very fascinated then by the the integration of digital characters into filmed environments. So this is a recent one and then I'll talk more about the animated series. So this is an example of an animated character in a filmed environment using that technique. You're doing the best you can with what you've got and you can't do any better than that. Hmm. Although, you should probably get more sleep. A little inspirational amoeba. So to create these worlds, in much the same way that the dots 
could we can get depth from it. Um, in the early 90s, I was then introduced to a piece of software called 3D Studio. And this was magic in the computer for me because all of those things that I learned about depth and motion, and although it was not a, a stereoscopic um, depth view, uh, it, it did mean I could actually create objects within 3D space. So you would see it from the top, the view, the side view, the, and then you could create a, an object and uh, obviously a, a character in, in my case. This was the very early um, version of it when it first came out. It was DOS based. It was an absolute train wreck to use, but a very, very limit. Well, it, it was very powerful, but very different. The user interface was very complicated or sort of long-winded. It has, of course, advanced enormously since then and now looks more like this sort of thing. So it's and can create amazing images. So 3D Studio Max is now my main um, software of, of choice for creating my virtual characters and virtual worlds. And that is what I'm going to be talking about here now is the pint-sized chat. Having, having learned all these different, dis different disciplines, um, I, I figured that I really wanted to create an animated series um, with animated characters in uh, filmed and photographed environments. Uh, and so I started scribbling out ideas. And uh, pint size chat is ultimately what came out, but this is some of the journey. It's a CG animation uh, combined with the live action environments. And to jump to the end and then we'll go back, this is ultimately, and this is in, um, you can preview this, these are the two characters. And then I will show you how, uh, how I got to this point. The, here they are, Carl and Harry sitting on a, next to their pint of beer in the pub. Right. So it all started with a sketch. I just wanted two little characters that they could be um, bouncing ideas off each other. I wanted them to be quite small. I, I liked the uh, depth of field, the bokeh highlights, and then pubs seem to be quite, they're very, th quite theatrical without being theatrical. They've got lots of colorful lighting and, and interesting things. So, so I wasn't entirely sure what the characters were going to be initially, but I knew that I wanted them to be quite sort of triangular, the sort of mirror images of each other. So you can see on the little sketch there, the one is um, triangle based with a very small head. Um, and then the other one is, is, is more. So the, the idea was that one has a small brain and a big mouth, and the other one has a big brain and a small mouth. So they, they kind of um, <laughs> complement each other. Uh, and then out of nowhere, the idea came that they would actually be so small that they could sit next to a pint of, a pint of beer. Um, and, and hence the name pint size chat. So they're sitting there having a pint, just chatting away to themselves and they themselves are pint size. So the first element I knew I had was, uh, uh, that, that was designed was a pint glass that was already figured out. So here we go into a new stereoscopic and more well, planning, uh, this is a 3D scan. I took, a, uh, I took an existing pint glass, the classic dimple pint mug and uh, did a 3D scan of it to get a 3D model. So that uses a, a laser line and then calculates the depth from uh, the differences of what it's expecting it to be. It's expecting it to see, the camera is expecting to see a straight line and then obviously the line gets disturbed by the object in front. So the stereo, so it creates depth from that. Um, and then, get a video to catch up there. And so from that, I could then have a 3D model, which is what you see on the left. In the middle, we see the version of the pint glass with um, no texture. And then on the right, once I've added, um, adjusted it so that it uh, looks glass-like and beer-like. Um, for all of the um, characters and environment, I needed to capture, well, capture the environment lighting. I used a, uh, a Ricoh Theta camera, which has two uh, 180 degrees cameras either side of this stick and catch, captures an image that is a equirectangular, complete surround up and down 360 in all directions so, um, and a high dynamic range. 
I can use that then for lighting. So what I do is I unwrap it um, into the 3D space, into a, 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 a sphere, reproject that image onto the sphere. And then what you see is, um, this, so this is, so I took the picture inside the pub, of course, and then uh, then when the camera turns around, you get to see the, the lighting and the, the different bits of the pub and what this, what I can get from this is both lighting and reflections. And that's why it works so well then to see what we'll see here is when you then get the reflections and the lighting on the pint glass. So that's created the scene for me then. And going, uh, then setting up a stereoscopic camera in that environment, the whole environment there, although the back, obviously the backdrop is um, projected on and is technically flat. Um, because I'm using shallow depth of field, um, it, it works okay. Then onto the character development, which we'll zip on through, but just to give you an idea of some of the iterations uh, these guys went through. From initially the initial sketch you saw where they were kind of just blobs um, going, uh, I, I hired um, an illustrator by the name of Mark Bem, who is a wonderful um, character illustrator and designer. So we worked through the characters, um, how they would look, and then I told him which ones I, which characteristics and which bits I liked. And uh, so we ended up with Carl and Harry. So this is Carl on the left and Harry on the right. And from there I had to sculpt the characters and I sculpt them digitally, again in the, in the 3D software. And using, if you think back to the the wiggle technology uh, of the um, the stereoscopic imagery, um, using that to to sort of fake depth when I'm when I'm sculpting, I wiggle the image backwards and forwards, then I get an idea of where it is I'm sculpting in space. Um, there's more and more uh, possibilities to do virtual reality sculpting, actually, where you actually can see the depth of an object right in front of you. But this was the guys, Carl and Harry. So here is an initial sculpt of Carl. Uh, this is his head there before he's been painted. And that shows you the mesh work, the grid. So he's actually a 3D model in space, in, in, you know, in the, within the computer there, ready to be animated. And uh, as I say, you know, once I set up the 3D camera, but basically it's, they work very much the same as, as a traditional uh, you know, plasticine puppet model in their 3D space. So here is a stereo version of Carl, if you can uh, preview that. Get to see the model there. I'll play it one more time. Okay. Oh, okay. It's not going. But there you go. And there's Harry. So again, you can free view it and see the model. So basically, this is what I get to see in the uh, in the 3D software. Okay. So from there, and this one we've already seen, but there they were. So sat sat by their pints, and I've got a complete scene, uh, model the the stools and the bar and everything. The environment is the dome. Going for time. Yeah. The other thing with capturing the lighting, it, I can of course uh, capture lighting from different environments, and here you get to see how it affects the character. So once I've got the character and I've got the lighting, then um, the the mirror sphere you see in the corner is uh, showing you the dome lighting that I captured, and then the character is purely lit by that, and you see how it affects. Him. So I can have him in a variety of, uh, of actually photographed environments. Hmm. Okay, so something's gonna. There it was, and uh, so here is Harry in stereo. Uh, playing the banjo. So you can see I've taken the, I've got a filmed, it's actually a flat back plate, um, the, the image behind him. 
but uh, he is then lit with the the uh, dome lighting. Now, what you get to see here is um, that although, and what I what I then discovered during the process here, that although the uh, the flat two D background works fairly well, um, it, it would I obviously needed to film stereoscopic backgrounds as well, so that I can have objects closer up and get more uh, get a bit more parallax uh, shift and a bit more extreme three D. Next. And just to quickly go over some of the animation technique here, which is also using a stereoscopic or like a depth capturing system. And he, uh, the facial motion cap is all motion capture, the, the face and the head uh, turns. So uh, in the iPhone X and upwards, it has a depth camera built into it, um, which actually does a, a scan of your face hundreds of thousands of small infrared dots that's tracking your face, which is how it does the facial recognition stuff for um, security. But one of, the, um, one of the wonderful things it can do is capture a recording of your face um, and actually give you a, a 3D model of your own head, which can then be connected up to an animated character. And he can, you know, and, and so it's a, a motion capture setup. So this is all built into the, the iPhone X and upwards. So I've used that for all of the facial animation. And then the body animation is a combination of hand animated, but then also I've built a puppetry rig. Um, so here again, we see a bit of, this is the design for an arm. This is within the computer, so design it all uh, in 3D. Keeping an eye on the time. And then uh, 3D printing the parts. Um, again, it's all this sort of crossover between going 2D to 3D, 2D to 3D, sort of all these different um, techniques and disciplines and just trying stuff out. So this is quite fascinating to me to see when I've created something essentially two-dimensionally on my screen and then the 3D printer prints it out and now it's <laughs> now it's a physical 3D object again it's quite incredible so here's a parts and then um, and then here it is in action so this is in in real time connected up to the computer so you can see it Well, anyway, there you see the arm moving away. So that's just moving in real time. So it's puppeteer, digital puppetry. Makes it very fast to create the animation, the, for some of it at least. Now, as I was creating it stereoscopically, I, I was released, I've released, um, I release episodes regularly, both in 2D and 3D. Um, 3D, it's best with uh, VR goggles, but n not everyone, particularly Carl and Harry, is is so afraid with the, the tech. But it's uh, it's an interesting. There's some interesting challenges in creating it stereoscopically. So I went for a VR 180 um, format because what I found was one of the very interesting things with the with the stereoscopic effect is that it, putting the camera right next to them, it feels like they're sat next to you, that you're part of the conversation. And uh, so I, I definitely recommend checking it out. I don't have, I don't, I can't actually show the VR 180 version of the video. I can show you how it kind of looks. It doesn't really work on, uh, <laughs> but it, they're on YouTube. So if you, if you see it here, th this, yeah, this is how it looks 2D, uh, 2Dified. So on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, you can click and drag and move the, the, the video around. But if you're watching it in a VR headset, it has depth and it looks like you're sitting right next to them. And that's, uh, that's a, you know, you're a fly on the wall. 
Um, so that's a that's a complete episode there. There's many episodes. These guides are quite entertaining. I won't play a whole episode now. They're in, they tend to only be about 45 seconds to a minute long each episode. Um, so uh, if you're interested, then I I'd certainly uh, you should go and have a look. They're quite fun. And um, uh, yeah. one of and what I was going to say was one of the technical. Uh, challenges with creating a, a VR 180 format is that one going back to the original artistic choices of I like the depth of the short the, uh, the shallow depth of field the, with a 180 degrees uh, lens there's it, it's so wide open there's there's no depth of field so I had to fake that and that also goes back to what we saw with the uh, the dots and the Z depth image where white is close and black is far away. From that, I so I output from the 3D software uh, a depth pass, um, which is the image on the left. And from that, I can then say, I can then feed it through the software and say, okay, even though there's no depth information because the lens is so wide, fake it and just make it look like the background's out of focus like that, you know, like a traditional 50 mil lens or something. And then, so finally, then what's next? The next step is uh, creating um, stereoscopic environments. I now have bought a, uh, a 3D camera. And so I can actually feel I don't have to do the char-char technique. I can um, film environments. And so my plan is to have these guys out a bit more out in the open, enjoying nature. Although that clearly terrifies them because the pub is their safe space. So that's Pint Size Chat, Carl and Harry. They're two, um, two guys who thought they understood the world outside and now it's evolving faster than they are. The, uh, the pub is their safe space and they're able to sit there and chat about the world and air each other's, air their confusion, share their confusion and enjoy a pint. So if you want to check it out, it's on pintsizechat.com. There's links to everything. And uh, as I say, if you want to see it stereoscopically, uh, YouTube, sometimes Facebook, it's a bit um, finickety. Uh, also, um, DOVR, uh, the, the VR platform. But you can look at it, um, um, yeah, just to preview it on, on YouTube if you can get if you can do that, or uh, with a VR headset, is VR headset is absolutely recommended. Thank you very much.